Hey guys, I just wanted to share a quick video with you with some products I use and don't use around the garden. First I'll start with over here is the uh, fertilizer. I use miracle Grow and uh, Scott's Super Bloom. Uh, sometimes I use a different type of uh, Super Bloom, but basically it's a high phosphorus. A high uh, middle number. Um, this isn't the only stuff I use. Before I plant the garden, when I till it in, I add uh, some triple 13 azomite and a product here is called ironite basically just has minerals for the soil the um i use the miracle grow and the scotch basically as a one-two punch for uh tomatoes and peppers basically i get the plants going good with the miracle grow and then when they start blooming i switch over to the super bloom to help promote more blooms I think the packages on these box say add this uh, fertilizer to your plants uh, weekly. I don't typically do it weekly. I maybe monthly or whenever I think I need to do it. Now this is my uh, primary go-to insecticides. It's all organic insecticides. Uh, first here in the back, I use a uh, diametaceous earth. Now, uh, if I butcher any of these names, bear with me. I not good in pronouncing some of them. Uh, this is basically a powder. Um, I, I think it works okay. I try to put it down when I draw up a row just to keep any insects from crawling down there and eating eating the little seedlings or any sprouts that might be coming up. Um, basically pour it in a little cup or actually I use a, um, a, a little plastic pot that's got little holes in it and I just shake it across the, the row. You know, just be careful if it's a windy day, stay downwind, or don't do it at all on a windy day. That's one thing I don't like about uh, dust, is they're just difficult to get down without risk of breathing it in or getting it everywhere, places you don't want. So, if you want to mix this in with on top of your dirt, that's that's what I do. I don't really try to put it on the plants or anything, it seems to be a pain. I know some folks, will, you can mix it with water. And then spray it, but I don't I don't know if it's actually effective doing that. Uh, then I have this here. This is a uh, pyrethrins. It's a fruit tree spray, but it's also used for a garden. I haven't used this really yet. Uh, had a little spray bottle of it once. I'm not sure if it really works all that well. It might be as just as effective as um, spinosad. And if you notice, I have, I bought all most of this stuff at Lowe's. It had a discount, normally about $17 for this little container. Got it for, I think it says $3. I bought a whole bunch of this stuff. They had a whole rack full of it, so I stocked up. And I, the organic insecticides are very expensive. And if you get an opportunity to buy stuff cheap, definitely you can save your money. And then you have the... Uh, BT, it's caterpillar killer, um, and all these things, products, um, might not have the same name in your area, but just look at the active ingredient, I don't know, I'm going to try to pronounce the actual name of it, I just call it BT, I think most people call it BT, but it's, um, mostly for killing worms and caterpillars, it won't do any good for other insects from what I can tell, so. I like to use it, you know, if I see any caterpillars eating on the tomato plants, I think hornworms or cabbage loopers, or I like to put it in the, um, mix it in with water, spray it inside my corn husk to keep the corn earworms out from eating, eating all my corn. We have here is a spinosad. I think this is the only one, maybe the pyrethrins, that has a limit to how much you can use it. So uh, use as uh, instructed. I think it's only, a, well, every plant's different, but you, you can't just continue to use it. You gotta wait uh, days to harvest and number of applications per season, etc. But this is also fairly good at organic insecticide. And I have the neem oil. Neem oils, I use it a lot. It stinks, but I like it. It's great for aphids. Uh, it also, if you're spraying 
other ones, I actually mix this with maybe the Caterpillar Killer and maybe Spinosad. This actually helps things stick to the plant. So if anything were to come chomping on the plant later on, it'll find neem oil and whatever ingredient you might be mixing with it. So I think that makes it last a little bit longer. I know if some of these are just mixing with water, I think as soon as the water dries, the product kind of goes away it washes away really quickly so i think the oil actually bonds it to the plant a little better then i have behind here i have some sulfur dust i have i tried to use it once i don't know if i it does any good it says it controls powder mildew rust and mites so i'm gonna try to use that i like to sometimes make a a cocktail out of different things just to try different things out there is a spreader sticker. This isn't actually a insecticide. This so you mix this with your your water and your your um, insecticide, and it helps it stick to the plants. Normally, if you don't add, it's depending on your water. If you just add it to the plants, you, the water just beads off and falls right off the plant. This actually allows that water to stick to the plant leaves instead of just falling right off. So you don't probably don't have to buy this kind of thing, but I've had it for several couple of years now, and it's still probably it's getting kind of low. But you can use a little drops of soap or something in your water too, basically to help it stick to plants. Now onto some non-organic um, insecticide weapons. I have here seven. It's pretty common. Um, this has a again just like some of the other products you can only spray it a few times or just read the label do it as applied if you use it at all I I don't like using these items but here in southeast Texas there's there's just bugs you can't you can't beat with organic I, that's just my opinion some are just relentless and just kind of laugh at you when you're spraying organic so if you need to get out here with some of these i mean i don't i don't know if you're hardcore organic don't use it if not pull out these use as instructed here in the uh, powder i like to use the powder if i have an ant problem sometimes the diametaceous earth doesn't help with ants so again this is something i would use when i'm drawing up the row I just sprinkle it on the row. I don't like spraying this up on the plants or when it's windy because I don't want to breathe it in. Even if you have a dust mask, it gets on your skin, all over your skin. I just don't like doing that. So I keep it low and on the dirt. That's about all I do with it. Here I have a um, vegetable and garden insect uh, spray. I don't remember the active ingredient. I had, might have to look up that one. I'm not, I can't pronounce it anyway. So it's just kind of, it's another one I use if, you know, I, I bought it to try it. It works. I might mix it with other things, but again, read the instructions, do as labeled. This here is a, um, a bifenthrin active ingredient. Now these say they're all garden safe, so I take their word for it, and but I don't, I try to use it sparingly only if I have a major problem to cure. And after the insecticides, I have this is a fungicide, Dacanil. I'm not sure the ingredient on there. And again, another fancy ingredient. I put this down basically. Um, I had problems with some beans sometimes, so I tried to put this down on the row instead of to maybe cure any fungus or disease that might be in the soil before. They germinate because it would just germinate, live a little bit, and just die. I don't, I don't, couldn't figure it out. So I tried this, and I tried on some of my rows now. I haven't sprayed this on any kind of plant for, you know, um, different diseases or anything. I haven't really done anything with it. I just bought it, just to try it out. Now back here, these are herbicide products. Now, for all these products, I definitely recommend using some kind of spreader sticker. Now, not necessarily for using in the garden. Some of these aren't for the garden. Just kind of a generic uh, type of 
weed brush killer grass killer but definitely use this spreader sticker to make sure that that um, that product actually sticks to the leaves and doesn't just bead right off the product so it's really not effective first you have a roundup I don't know if it's good or bad they say it's garden safe I've asked people some people say don't ever put that in your garden some say it's fine I don't know I just I don't put it in the garden only I did when I had very just started my garden just to clear out the uh, sod make sure nothing's alive there seem to help and I do it around around the garden area around the fencing I have just to keep the grass from growing all in there it's kind of a pain to keep that grass out of there here's a, a weed killer I use for the lawn it's very effective against weeds it doesn't kill the grass kills the weeds have tons of weeds there's it's almost impossible to control weeds and then the brush killer now this is kind of surprising I thought that this would kill everything grass and brush but one time I just bought this because this is actually cheaper to buy than the Roundup at the time that I bought it but I'm not sure if it's the same now so I sprayed this uh, in an area that I wanted to get rid of grass and brush all at the same time well the brush died grass was still living so if you need to kill brush and not your grass I think no guarantees that this this is pretty good product for that and like I said definitely for this make sure you have a sticker because you want that to stick real good to the brush you want to kill and also use this or there's a lot of plants that you can't just spray this on it would kill the foliage real nicely but it won't kill the actual plant so I'll go back in the brush and I'll clear the brush cut the brush down and I'll mix up some of this and I'll spray it right there on the uh, uh, stump or whatever that I killed it won't grow back then and if it's really stubborn stuff you cut it back you put this whole concentrate you just put a little bit on a in a in a bowl and have a little brush and you just brush it on the on the stump it'll take care of it I haven't found anything yet that it didn't take care of so now on to some stuff that you do not want to use in your garden most of these something like Amdro I've been told you can put it around your garden but not in it um, I put it around it quite a bit around it if I got ants in my garden I put it way around it I don't know if it actually does any good doing it that way so I wouldn't waste your time with it trying to take care of uh, ants in your garden you know I mean if the ants carried into your garden it's the same thing as being in your garden I did some research on the actual active ingredient in Amdro, and it says it doesn't go into the soil, and the plants don't absorb it, and supposedly it's safe. Um, it won't harm you, but it says don't use it in your garden, so don't use it in your garden. Here I have a complete insect killer. I found a whole bunch of this stuff at... Um, there was a sale at um, Big Lots. I had a, tons of this. I love this stuff not for the garden, but for around the house to get rid of bugs and trees and around the house to keep bugs out of the house and in the lawn. It works good for you know killing the fleas and ticks. We have dogs, so not a whole lot of things that takes care of fleas and ticks. This seems to do a pretty good job at knocks them out, but don't let your animals in there until it dries. They can... They might get sick if they eat it, eat it. But it's a, um, I guess they don't want you using it in your, your garden because this is actually systemic, which means that the plants actually absorb it. So, which plants absorb it, it goes into the, the fruit. Fruit, not good. You don't want the poison in your fruit. That's why a lot of these other ones are safe, is they don't absorb in. They're on the top, so you wash your fruit, the poison's gone, or the active ingredients gone or the active ingredient doesn't last long now here is a, a systemic disease control product uh, I just bought this I wanted to fight some baby brown patch in my lawn and some tree diseases I don't know if it'll work for anything in a tree disease but uh, I'm gonna give it a shot for brown patch and maybe make my trees in the 
you are a little bit healthier. Again, this is systemic. Don't use it for the lawn. And a lot of the stuff that says garden safe, it'll say it in the instructions, garden safe. And some will say do not use it in your garden. But I hope hope this helps. A lot of these stuffs I've had for a, a while and I, I don't use a whole lot of them anymore. I mostly just stick with the BT neem oil and spinosad. Um, I don't use that as much anymore. It's kind of hard to find. Uh, if you go Lowe's, I found this to be the cheapest place for this stuff. It's not in an easy to find area, but it's definitely cheaper than going to a seems like a feed store or nursery. It just seems like nurseries are way more expensive. And if you definitely if you can find it on clearance or something, I'm not sure why it's on clearance. Maybe they're just trying to get rid of it. It's definitely dirt cheap. Get it because normally it's quite a bit expensive. And the organic stuff doesn't seem seems like you have to add more product to per gallon. So you're using more of it. Costs more than the um, synthetic stuff here. All right, I hope this video helps. Any questions, please feel free to ask or comments will be appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice day.